Good afternoon. My name is Ricky Goldman and I am a professor of digital media design for learning at NYU Steinhardt School. I'm delighted to be here today with you to celebrate Seymour's contribution not only to those of us who were with him in the earlier years but also those of you who will continue to carry this legacy and understand that at the core of Seymour's work is this belief in the individual. Uh, a, be a really strong belief in how um, each student creates their own path and fulfills their, their goals, their inspirational sources and makes, some, makes something of their lives. So, um, the first thing I want to tell you about, about Seymour, I'll call him Seymour, that's what I call him, um, and, um, and you can too, by the way, is that the core thing that I believe we all learned in our community in those early years and again continuing throughout his, his years of teaching and research and being our mentor was that learning is a culture. Um, often he talked about what happened in Brazil with the Samba schools. So the Brazilian Samba schools became a strong metaphor in the work that we were doing. And certainly it was one of the influences on me to become an ethnographer, to look deeply into the culture and to understand not only what the thick description of something is, as Clifford Gertz would say, but also the thick interpretation. Seymour just had that way of creating that kind of culture around us. And not because he encouraged us and, you know, spoke highly about us. No, it was, it was this, it was because he challenged us. He challenged without ever putting an idea down. Every idea was a good idea. So I thought I would give you an example of something that I carry with me from those years with Seymour. Maybe even two things. The first one is the, the very first years of our doctoral seminar. Um, and here we are at MIT, it's 1985, and the lab has just opened up. And everybody is very excited. And, you know, we're, in, we're with Seymour Papert, at working in the Hennigan School, doing all these kinds of things. And, um, and he says, in the middle of doctoral seminar, Ricky, go get your pink bike. So I think, okay, <laughs> get my bike. And he puts it right in the middle of the seminar room on the table, turn, turning it upside down, of course. And we start talking about gears and the relationship between power and force and, um, and how gears worked. And of course, for those of you who already have read Mindstorms, you'll know that, that this was a fascination of Seymour Papert's. Um, as a young child, as he talks about in his book, he would lie underneath cars and try to figure out how the gears worked. And of course now we wouldn't be able to do any of that. I don't think we have any idea. We can't tell anybody to go underneath anything and look at gears. I think they were trucks. They were old trucks or something. Somebody will correct me who's there, so it's okay. Um, so this, there was this fascination with making, th putting things into your hands and indeed he always did have something in his hands. talked so strongly about making was not just in the Maria Montessori, John Dewey notion of doing and making, but more that mathematics could be learned. Serious scientific areas of research could be studied by children if they actually created objects to think with. And that was a very core idea, um, this objects to think with. So it wasn't just the making of something, but it was the thinking about what that making meant. And so often in maker cultures that we have now, we don't, I mean, maybe we do, but we need to continue Seymour's legacy of keeping that idea of reflecting and interpreting what we did as well as making it. And the other 
important thing, I think, to future learning scientists and future students of, of continuing the legacy of Seymour Papert is um, to understand that to build something is to love it and to create something is an act of sharing and making things objects not only that are working and functional but communicate to other people and um, for me that was what changed my life because it was important for me to understand exactly what children were thinking about and how their thinking could be interpreted through what I call multiple points of viewing. But none of this work um, would have been possible, not only from the inspiration of Seymour Papert and Gloriana Davenport and others at the MIT Media Lab, Marvin, every, everybody, you know, there's too many names to mention, but um, it wouldn't have been possible at all to do this without Seymour's attention to caring about children and that each person, each student, each learner has to find their own path and create something that is meaningful for them and thereby doing have something to offer others. Thank you very much for inviting me today.